Hello everyone, Dan Hurd with Dan Hurd Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. One of the extremely common questions I get is, Dan, which gold pan should I buy? There's so many, which one should I get? Well, my standard answer up to now is the Garrett Super Sluice Pan because it is my go-to pan. But I thought for your sake, I would get one of each of the big production type pans here, test them out, and see how they all hold up to the Garrett Super Sluice. And I hope this will give you the information you need to make your own decision. Hope you enjoy. So instead of sitting in my backyard or my kitchen or something doing this uh, evaluation, I thought I'd bring you to the Fraser River because I absolutely love the Fraser. It is spring, it's warming up, although it's still cold this morning, and is just a beautiful spot here on the Fraser. Trains going by, snow in the mountains, birds flying overhead, an eagle just went overhead. Whew, beautiful. And what better place to do this evaluation than here where I find the gold. Now I brought two buckets of pay dirt here with me today. This is the same dirt I use in my pay dirt bags. Screen down to quarter inch, though some of these pans definitely say you don't need to screen to use them. However, today I'm gonna to use the same dirt in all of them to do my evaluation. I hope to make a bit of a mini series here. I'm gonna show them all in action in this first video. Just gonna try them all out, see how they all work. But then I'm gonna do an individual video on each one. It'll be short videos, but individual on each one to go a bit more in depth on each one. Show you the pros, the cons, what I like, what I don't like, which situation each would be best at. That's the plan. Let's get to it. The pans I have today, I have the Gold Hog Flow Pan. Gold Hog sent me off a flow pan to test out, so I'm going to test it. I contacted the guys from Gold Claw saying, hey, I'm doing this video on gold pans, what do you got for me? And they are starting to produce a production pan. This is actually a 3D printed version of what they want to produce properly. Now, this is one of their first prototypes, but they sent it to me, said, Dan, give our production pan a try. Then we have the Pyramid Pan Pro. And uh, talking with the guys from Pyramid Pan, they say one thing I have to do when I test it out is test it on clay material because it excels on clay material. Now, I don't have clay material today, but we'll talk about that when I test it. We have here a flat pan. Uh, these are the competition speed pans. They go fast and furious catching the gold. Unfortunately, my tub is not big enough to work the flat pan in. So for it, I might have to go down to the river. And then of course, the Garrett Super Sluice. I have set up so that I can uh, recover my tailings and go through my tailings to see how much each pan lost as I was going. That's why I'm working in tubs rather than down in the river. Hard to recover my tailings down in the river. And of course, we've got a little campfire here, got to roast some hot dogs for lunch, and it's almost lunchtime. Now, as I said before, this first pan for each of them is just going to be me trying it out. No timing, no evaluation, no losses, just trying out each one once. We'll do all of those sort of more scientific tests in the individual videos. Okay, the Garrett Super Sluice, I know. I know how to use it. I know what it's capable of. I know how fast I can push it. And there we go, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten pieces of gold for what it's worth.
Next, we will be trying the Gold Hog Flow Pan. I'm missing one screw. I think it uh, shook out in my truck somewhere. I didn't really tighten them enough. It's okay, it still holds together, no problem. And I have my measured amount. Uh-oh. Okay, there's gonna be a power up right off the bat. That's all I can put in. Any more than that's falling out the end. Well, we'll go with that for now. I see the problem. Now, Vogus Prospecting did a review of a Gold Hog Flow Pan not long ago on his channel, and I see the same problem that he had. As soon as I put this in the water, half of my material is going to fall out those ends before it's even processed. Now I'm going to try to mitigate that by putting it in quickly so the water flows inwards and pushes it in, hopefully um, stratifying a bit and letting the gold fall, but I can only fit about half the amount of material in here, and as I get it wet, I'm even going to lose some of that. Yeah. Mm. Stratify quickly. No. So, yeah. As I, I'm not evaluating right now. I'm just trying them out. But I lost at least half of my material out the ends. Stratify it nicely. Get rid of the big rock. Don't need that. Stratified. It is quick. That processed the material very fast. It did. And I guess I have to put it into another pan to determine if I have gold or not. Okay, I just grabbed another uh, Garrett pan here. It's crazy, I've got like 10 gold pans all around me and in my truck and everywhere. For one video, 10 pans, go figure. So we'll pull out the matting. We'll wash out the pan for the stuff that made it around the edges. Wash out the mats. Now I'm sure you wouldn't have to go through this process every time you did a pan. You could do pan after pan after pan, keeping it all in the mats. But I just want to see what I found in one pan. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of gold. And one of them's a nice size. I'll bring out the good camera to show you that. Now I know I can't make any real comparisons about the amount of gold they're catching because I am using random scoops from my pay dirt for each and every one. When I go into the actual evaluation of each pan, I will make sure that I'm using the same material in each pan so I know how much gold is there. But there we go. About 8 to 10 pieces of gold in that one as well and some of them are pretty nice. Next I'm going to use the Gold Claw Production Pan. Now, when I called up Gold Claw and said, hey, I want to do a review of your pans, they said, hey, Dan, we're in the process of developing a production pan, a bigger version. Because one thing I didn't like about the Gold Claw pans is they were too small, in my opinion. So what he did is he took his uh, digital files and 3D printed me one, saying, Dan, try this one out. You can see the flaw along the side here. That's actually where the 3D printer ran out of space. They had to create a second piece, glue them together. So this is not a strong pan as a, you know, a proper plastic pan would be, but this will give me an idea of how the size and shape of their production pan will work once it's in production. <laughs> yeah, we've got the material. Let's fill her up. Easily takes the amount I need. And let's give it a shot. I should note, I have never used a gold claw pan before. Ooh, it's got nice handles on it. Nice handles on the side for holding it. Again, we're gonna start with wet material. So let me just get it all wet to start with. Not losing any here. I could probably fit two, three times this amount in this pan easy. Okay, now the idea with this pan, from what I hear, is that you shake it real good to stratify it, get the gold on the bottom, 
and that as you tip it forward, you keep shaking, keep it stratified, and that these riffles will all catch the gold. So let's try that. Get it stratified. There we go. Everything's moving. That's good. And then tip it forward, keep it shaking, keep it stratified. Now let's bring everything back down to the bottom for a second. Make sure we're not losing any. I'm sure the gold, the gold claw people are uh, watching me do this horrified at my technique, but <laughs> hey, I'm just like everyone else out there trying it for the first time. I don't really know what I'm doing. So this is what others will do when they try this pan for the first time. They'll try it out, maybe not knowing how to use it properly. There we go. We're down to the nitty gritty in the bottom. Let's get it all back in the bottom of my pan. Turn it around to the finishing side. There we go. A nice load of gold. About the same as the other ones I've had as well. Yeah, it was pretty easy to use. I like it. Now the next pan I'm going to be using is the Pyramid Pro pan. Now I've got it sort of straddling the edges here so it will sit flat. One thing I do worry about this pan, because of its shape, there's nowhere to sit down on the ground so it's hard to load it. Luckily today I've got a spot that I can sit it flat and put my dirt in. Okay, so that looks like it pretty much fills that pan. Three quarters of a Garrett Super Sluice pretty much fills this pan, and that wasn't too bad, but I wouldn't have been able to sit that flat on the ground because it would have tilted over and I would have lost some of my material. But again, I'm not evaluating. I'm just using. Let's see how this goes. The guys at Pyramid Pro, they said that this stuff this pan works really well with clay materials because these little ridges that it has break up the clay nicely. He was actually worried I would do an evaluation using just river run stuff that's easily broken up because that's not necessarily where this pan excels. Which is what I'm doing. Okay, so here we go. We're ready. Let's get it fluidized. Don't quite have enough room in this tub. There we go. Now it's all moving. It took a long time to get it all moving. It was really solidified in the bottom. Hmm. I don't remember on this one if you're supposed to tilt it forward or tilt it to the side. My gut feeling is on this you tilt it to the side because the way those riffles are set. Mm, not liking this. The stuff in the bottom is still solidified, still concreted up down there. This stuff is moving nicely, but right there is still concreted. So it's not getting down into the bottom. Again, no evaluations. Just use it. First time using the Pyramid Pro Pan. Actually, I tried one once before. Okay, now the design of this pan here is that all your cons are in the bottom. And if you want those out, you take off the little wing nut on the bottom and drop it out into a pan. Let's try that. Okay, take out the wing nut. There we go and the concentrates fall out the bottom. Yeah. 
And again, this pan is not designed to just do one of and then clean it out. It's designed to go over and over and over again, keeping the cons in the bottom the whole time, and then every once in a while, taking it apart, taking out the cons, and then continuing. Let's see what it has in it. And there we go, about the same. Let's get this on camera so you guys can see. Here's the cons for the Pyramid Pro pan. Some nice gold. I should point out, I said that I use this material for making up my pay dirt bags. This is the material I use before I salt it with gold. In my pay dirt bags, I always use this base material and then put gold and gems and everything else in it. Now the last pan to evaluate, I can't do in my tub here. I have the material all ready for it and I'm gonna put it on right now. But the flat pan needs a big open area of water to work. So I'm gonna throw my waders on and I'm gonna go down to the Fraser and do a pan down there. Now the idea with the flat pan here is that it's got these grooves. They're not just grooves though, they're little ramps. They ramp up and then fall, ramp up and fall. So as you shake the pan back and forth, the gold works its way up the ramps and then falls but can't work its way back out. So you shake back and forth, side to side, and every time you shake it, any gold jumps one little step and another little step and another little step. Eventually, all the gold ends up in the little dish that's in the middle as you shake it and all the lighter stuff just flows off the edge supposed to be the fastest gold pan around. I've only used one once before, and I wasn't very good at it then, so I'm not gonna try to push my speed, but let's see. Ooh, I should start with it wet, because I started with everything else wet. Okay. Here we go, even back and forth, side to side, back and forth, around in circles, back and forth, side to side, and then big circles to bring the lights off. Oh, this water is cold! This is one of the pans they say you don't need to classify beforehand because as you do that, all the big rocks just fall off right away. And sure enough, I see gold in the middle. I see a lot of gold in the middle. This was a nice pan. Nice pan of gold. I should also point out this was the bottom of the bucket. And that's probably why there's more gold. But yeah, big flake, big flake, big flake. Another one over there, another one there, another one up there. Lots of gold. Nothing in the riffles. They've all moved their way to the center. That's nice. I like it, but it takes a lot of space. Again, no evaluations. Something else I notice here is a ton of garnets that I don't remember seeing in the other pans. Garnets don't pan out all that easily, so maybe this pan did a better job of catching the garnets even. I don't want to make any judgment calls before I do the actual evaluations of these pans, but so far I like what I saw with this. So as I said, this first video was not an evaluation in any way of any of these pans. I just wanted to get used to using them before I do the evaluation of each of them individually, which will be the next four videos for sure. Five, the next five videos for sure. But I'm gonna make each of those their own videos, so I'm gonna sign off here. 
I hope you enjoyed watching me try out these pans for the first time. We have the Gold Claw, the Gold Hog Flow Pan, the Pyramid Pro Pan, the Flat Pan, and of course, the Super Sluice. Before I sign off, big thanks to my patrons out there. Because of your support, I'm able to acquire all of this stuff, get out here in the field, and make these videos so all of the prospecting and YouTube community can watch my evaluation of these pans and my adventures. I hear a trainer coming. I hear a trainer coming. Just come around the bend. So big thanks to my patrons out there for your support. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link at the end of this video. Click on that link, it'll take you off to Patreon. A $10 pledge goes a long ways in helping me do this. For those of you who haven't subscribed to my channel yet or are new here, I hope you like what you see enough to warrant a subscription. Please consider subscribing. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment. Until the next time. Bye. Watch the train. I love the trains. Let's see if we can get them to honk at us. Ah. We'll wave. Waving out the window too. <laughs>